Thank you. Your motion. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. I, I can only assume that Mr. Chu wrote that speech for an audience outside the court because it didn't really address my arguments. I'm going to focus on what our specific arguments are for the motion to strike, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Chu spent almost 30 minutes of the court's time talking about the, the disputed evidence of physical abuse in this case, which Ms. Hurd hasn't even put on her case. And, and um, I can tell you she's not the abuser. And if the case moves forward, she and her witnesses will put on even more evidence of the physical abuse she suffered at the hands of Mr. Depp. But that's not the basis for our motion right now, Your Honor. He, he talks about how Mr. Depp uh, had a sworn denial um, and that that should count. He, he, we read his testimony. He claims he didn't strike her. But again, that's not the basis for our motion. The basis for our motion is the clear and undisputed evidence of non-physical abuse by his definitions, by his standards, by the standards of his expert. There is no dispute that Mr. Depp on abused Amber. And therefore, if he did it even one time, there is no dispute that even under their theory of the case, the implication that they want the jury to draw from the article, which again, I'm not arguing for the purposes of today, because under the legal standard, I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to waste the court's time with that. But even under their standard, the undisputed evidence is that Mr. Depp did commit abuse against Ms. Heard, and therefore that those first two statements were false. That's, that's our argument on that. As to the headline, it's funny, Mr. Chu, we played you know, two or three hours of an ACLU deposition. Now he says, well, that, that wasn't our witness. It was his witness, Your Honor. He just spent 10 minutes talking about what Mr. Doherty said. And Mr. Doherty testified that the Washington Post wrote the headline. That is the only evidence, Your Honor. I understand he says, well, Exhibit 1 has her name on it. Exhibit 1 has her name on it. But the only evidence in this case about who wrote that headline is Mr. Doherty's testimony. It is undisputed. They could have put anyone else on. They could have called Ms. Heard for that because that was not part of the stipulation at the, at the pretrial conference. It was only the tweet that we talked about, Your Honor, and they chose not to do that. Now, Ms. Heard will testify she didn't write that headline, so it wouldn't have helped them. But the, the, they've had three weeks to put on their case, Your Honor. They've controlled the playing field of evidence. There is no dispute that Ms. Heard did not write that headline. No dispute. Simply saying, well, her name is attached to it, that can't overcome the testimony of the ACLU. They call them a co-conspirator. Of course, Mr. Depp chose not to sue them. Um, but the testimony of Terrence Doherty that she didn't write that headline, that takes care of the sexual violence headline, Your Honor. And I, I'm, I'm not going to take up any more of the court's time addressing portions of Mr. Depp or Mr. Mr. Chu's argument that don't go to, to our motion, unless Your Honor has any specific questions. But no, I want to be you. respectful. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. For this motion, I've taken the arguments of counsel, and last night I reviewed all of the evidence that has been submitted in this matter. So as to the second and third alleged def defamatory statements, um, at the motion to strike at this juncture, I view the evidence in the light most favorable to the plaintiff and reasonable inferences from the evidence to the plaintiff. And if there is a scintilla of evidence that a reasonable juror could weigh, then the matter survives a motion to strike. In this matter, there is evidence in the case that a jury could weigh that the statements were made by the defendant, that the statements were about the plaintiff, that the statement was published, that the statement is false, and the defendant made the statement knowing it to be false, or the defendant made it so recklessly as to amount to a willful disregard for the truth. The weight of that evidence is up to the fact finder, so the motion to strike is denied as to statement two and three. Uh, the motion to strike as to statement one, I'm going to take under advisement because um, if it's not a stipulation, I'm not sure what it is, but there seems to be an agreement that the tweet of Ms. Heard is part of the plaintiff's evidence, which is not in evidence at this point. So I can't rule on that statement, whether or not it is just a tweet or if it's some sort of republication or something. I don't know because I haven't seen it yet. So as to the motion to strike on, on statement one, I'm going to take an advisement because ruling on it now, it would be premature because I just don't have that evidence in the case. Okay. Thank you very much, Ron. All right. Since it's 1230, we don't you want to just take lunch? Uh,